am Catherine White, the author of Tales of the Wovelin and co-author of Heroes of Ravenford. Today, I am here to talk about a common question I get, and that is, how do I start to write? So let's dive right in to how to start writing. Let me share my screen here. All right. So you've decided to dive into the thrilling world of storytelling. Congratulations. Prepare to embark on a wild journey of creativity, frustration, and probably a few caffeinated nights. So let's get the storytelling party started. First things first. You need to find a writing nook. A writing nook is a great way to help your brain focus on the task at hand, writing. It's very easy for us to get distracted. If I try to write at the kitchen table, notoriously, I get hungry. So I can't write there. If I try to write at my desk, I end up checking emails or something. If I write on the sofa, I end up surfing Facebook, notoriously. But... Most often, if I write on my bed, I get a lot more writing done. So I don't have any one set writing nook. I live in too small of a house for that right now. But my bed is very often the place where I can get left alone longest. Or my desk is where I can set a timer and remember that I am not checking emails there. Those two places I can focus the best. So find a place where you can focus. Um, some people like to write at a favorite cafe. Um, if you have a tree house, that's a cool place to write. I've done that. It tends to get too hot in the summer, but it's nice to write outside on the porch or something. So um, yeah, find, find a good writing nook. Find a good writing nook. All right, next, you're going to need an idea. Most writers already have an idea, but I have met a few that don't have an idea. So if you don't have an idea, don't sweat it. Ideas are all around us. You could write about a unicorn solving a rainbow theft, a retired superhero, superhero dealing with a midlife crisis. I, I don't know. I have lots of story starters and writing prompts on my website. I am one of those people that has so many story ideas that I am never going to be able to get around to writing. So I have created a lot of story starters, put them up on my website. So if you don't know what to write, I have some great writing prompts and story starters on my website. Also, if you do have something that you do have an idea, a story idea, and you just need to tighten it up or build on it, I have writing prompts on my website that will help you tighten that up. Also, just keep watching my videos because I'll have more about how to really tighten up your writing ideas and your plots and your characters and stuff. So um, I also post a writing prompt on my Facebook page and Instagram page every Wednesday, most of the time when I remember. So follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And yeah. Um, so once you have an idea for what you are going to write, you're going to need a character. A character is like that really, really close friend who doesn't complain about your singing in the shower quest or your uh, your questionable taste in socks, um, or lack thereof in my case. Uh, a character has a backstory, they have dreams and goals, and they have a reason to dislike being in your story. You know what is going on with your character better than anyone else. Create someone interesting. No one wants to read about a character who's perfect at everything. This is a common common writing mistake nobody wants a perfect character because guess what nobody else is perfect nobody wants a complete 
a-hole character either. We can't stand those. But we don't want somebody who's perfect. We want somebody like us doing our best with what we've got. So give your character quirks and insecurities and weaknesses. Um, maybe they have a fear of snakes or an obsession with keeping things clean. The more peculiar, the better. It's like seasoning for your, your story soup. And peculiar characters are easy for people to remember and to really relate to. All right, next. Get your plot in order. What is going to happen to your character? Will they face enormous challenges? Or perhaps they chase a lifelong dream. Whatever it is, make sure it's exciting and keeps your readers guessing. The best way to get your plot in order, well, honestly, is to read Save the Cat Writes a novel. That is the best book I have read for helping you get your plot in order. Your plot is centralized on your characters. And basically, how you can get your plot in order is to ask, who is my character at the beginning of the story? Who are they going to be at the end of the story? How do they change? What happens in between? And how can they keep making things worse for themselves? So, if you have not read uh, Save, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, definitely go get that book. The audiobook is great. The book book is great. I have both. Go get it. Go get it. I promise you will not regret it in your writing journey, whether you have already written books or you want to write books or even short stories, anything like that. You will love this book. It will save your life. Okay. And there should be a link in my description. All right. So next. Your story needs a setting. Most people don't struggle with this one. I have yet to really find anyone who really struggles with this. So a setting is like choosing a backdrop for a play. Um, it could be in a mystical forest, in a bustling city. I have it in Tales of the Woveland where it is in the Great Plains, basically, of my world. Um, the key is to describe it vividly so your readers can immerse themselves in the world you've created. So a lot of times what I've seen in amateur writing is that the amateur writer gets so focused on the action, the dialogue, the characters, what's going on, that all of a sudden, uh, like they were in a rat wagon, they were riding in a wagon together and talking, and then all of a sudden they're in a city. And I'm like, okay, I don't know where they were first. Were they in the city already? Were they outside of the city? What's their world look like? So you don't want to info dump and like spend three pages describing the countryside and the city and the world. Nobody likes that either. Everybody's just going to skip over that. But work in things as your characters are talking, as they're moving, whatever is going on, kind of work it into the flow of what is happening in the moment. So if they're talking, I like to throw in a dialogue, you know, different dialogue tags of instead of he said, she said, you know, he rolled his eyes to the side looking at the grove of apple trees as they pass by or whatever, something like that. So work in little bits of it around there. All right. Now comes the tricky part. Writing it, actually writing it. Writers spend so much time in our head. We love to just play in our head. And honestly, I feel like that should count as writing. And it should burn calories. But it doesn't. You have to actually sit down and spend time writing. A lot of young writers get tripped up because they're like, oh, my writing's not very good, or oh, it's so embarrassing, and it's so cringe. Nobody cares. Get it out of your head. Write it down. And your writing is only going to get better as you write. 
I have a lot of young writers come up and ask, how can I make my writing better? Which I'm going to be doing a video on that at some point. But my number one thing that I tell them every single time is just write, 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 write. Spend tons of time writing. Just write all the rubbish you can. All the short stories, all of the ideas in your head. The more you write, the better you will get. And then also remember to read. Spend time reading great, famous books, good, well-written books, Chronicles of Narnia, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Spend time in those books reading well-known, well-written authors, and your brain will absorb the parts that it likes. So I don't like a lot of token how he spends so much time describing things but I don't necessarily care for all of the lightheartedness of C.S. Lewis and yeah so my I piecemealed from all of the stories I read so definitely spend a lot of time reading and spend as much time as you can writing you won't be good at it at first. That's okay. That's the whole idea. Just start writing. Don't worry about perfection. Your first draft is like a gooey pancake. It's necessary, but it's not fit for human consumption until you flip it around a couple of times. So just keep going. And remember, you can always edit later. Just write. Speaking of editing... It is crucial. You don't want to get hung up on it while you are writing. So I always recommend just write. Sit down, write, get your story out of your head. You can edit after you get that first draft done. And believe me, after you get that first draft done, you're going to be going over your story so many times. You're going to have it memorized. But it's important. You've got to fix grammar, improve sentences, and cut unnecessary parts. Um, and, and then share it. Share it with friends. Let others read your work. Share it with a trusted friend who enjoys reading the things that you write about. They'll give you feedback. Maybe if you're lucky, they'll give you free pizza too. And just remember, every great writer was once a beginner. Okay? So you have to write and then begin the editing process. And don't be too harsh on yourself. You know, editing has to happen. There's going to be some of it that you're like, ew, that's okay. Every writer and every author has that. Next, have fun. So don't take yourself too seriously while you're writing. Throw in humor and irony and those inside jokes that only you and your cat understand. When you don't take yourself too seriously, don't take your story too seriously, your personality is going to shine through your writing. And people love that. People love that. There are going to be points in your story where you do need to be serious. I'm not saying that your story should never be serious. My my book, Tales of the Woblin, is a very serious book. But... Don't take yourself too seriously. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. Have fun with it. Just have fun with it. As soon as you start having fun, it stops being fun. So, and there you have it. Once you do that, all of those steps, you started your writing journey. And who knows where it will take you. Just remember, the most important thing is to have fun and keep honing your craft. You can only keep honing your craft if you are writing. Writing is a bit like life. It's unpredictable, messy, and full of surprises. Just embrace it. Get out there. Get to writing. And happy writing.